Hello, welcome to the Catalyst School, introduction to Project Catalyst. And today I will be going through a higher overview of uh, what is Catalyst, what roles there are, what challenges, proposals, how it kind of works. And in the middle of presentation, we will then ask uh, questions uh, from each other. Uh, if you have more, if you want to have more insights or in some specific uh, uh, thing. At the start, uh, I would like to introduce each other and and my, myself is uh, Teva Sachs, and I joined uh, Catalyst uh, School. I don't, well, I didn't really join. I, I would maybe perhaps say that we started it together with a few people um, at, in early funds. Uh, and the reason why we started is because we found out that this talk, we, we were lacking documentation. We still do, but uh, we felt like there should be some place where we could go and see everything in one place. So we started creating these documentations, pulling links together, making like partnerships with websites and trying to aggregate all that knowledge we are creating into one place. And now we had started to like struggle. Okay, how do we distribute it effectively? So we started doing workshops, one-to-one -one sessions um, and slow, slowly, step-by-step, step, we are educating each other uh, to be at the best of uh, in the Catalyst ecosystem. So how did I find out about Cardano? To me, it was a very long time ago, like 2017. I was into like AI stuff. And then I found out that I need clean data and the best approach would be blockchain for that. And this way I started learning and following blockchain like uh, material. And at some point, yeah, I kind of got really hooked into it now and been ever since been working for, not working for, but like educating myself uh, how to take this technology to everybody else too and benefit the entire world. And um, how, and I would like to ask the same things where other people are coming into the Cardano ecosystem. So, uh, Joe, could you tell us how did you find about Cardano and what hooked you here? Uh, well, I think, um... I'm not really sure the exact date, but it was several years ago now. I was investigating crypto in general, and I just went through the list, and I didn't like the energy consumption of Bitcoin and Ethereum's gas fees then and now don't make any sense to me. And so um, I read a small article about this environmentally friendly blockchain called Cardano and um, decided to investigate it further and kind of fell in love with the community. And, you know, now I write for Ada Pulse and... Uh, Cardano Army and I, I work on freeloaders and all kinds of different things. So it's just kind of grown, you know, just uh, just from a simple interest in crypto, and and I just kind of fell in love with the ecosystem, honestly. That's great. That's great. Uh, how about you, uh, Saurab? <laughs> I forgot your name, Gupta. <laughs> yeah, I I love Cardano because uh, it has plans with the security, scalability, and uh, of course, governance in the future. And of course, it has the advantages over Ethereum and Bitcoin. And uh, if I I was uh, last year, I was uh, I was trying to learn about uh, blockchains and everything. I figured out that uh, uh, Cardano is uh, one of the best in industry, but it is slow to develop because it has its own challenges uh, with IOX model and everything. But still, once it's fully functional in the coming years, it can beat every blockchain. So I believe in this uh, blockchain a lot. And uh, personally, I'm very much, uh, I'm getting very much passionate about learning new things in blockchain and contributing it. So uh, I think Cardano has, has a has lot of opportunities where we can be the part of the blockchain in this decentralized world from any part of the world. So I'm trying to learn. Mm, thanks if people are joining in. I, I think we could uh, switch the questions a bit up and ask uh, Benjamin, why did you join Catalyst? So we, we got some views how to join Gardano, but what hooked you up into this system we're in? Sure, sure. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I was, um, I'm not so I'm not somebody whose attention span can last for too long with uh, 
in just investing and money. And that's, you know, after a month of being in blockchain at all, and I was in uh, investing in Cardano, I was like, what's, what's more here? Like maybe, you know, I'm a writer and I thought maybe I could do some writing for a blockchain or something like this. And as I was looking into Cardano more and more, I was like, wait a second, what's this thing called Catalyst? And, you know, I was finding people talking about it on Twitter and then I found it on Discord and I was like, wait, what's this? You know, and I was like, oh, wow, there's a whole fund to help this blockchain. And like, you know, so as I started learning more and more, I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like, this is like so much more than I'd anticipated. I'm not just going to hold these like ADA tokens. I actually could help like make the world a better place. Like consequently, like I happen to trip over this like possibility of helping to make the world better. Like that's awesome, you know? So it was just like a bit of serendipity, I think. And um, I found other people saying similar things, you know, like, and um, and once I started seeing like the possibilities that Catalyst was really offering to not just like me for like, oh, I could get funded for this and that, but like the ideals and, uh, you know, how many people were really kind of joining around the world and, and um, you know, trying to shape this into something and seeing like all these different town halls pop up all over the world and you know, I don't know, it just it just became so much more than what I was really looking for when I was like coming in to just invest in some crypto, you know. Yeah, seeing people work with each other also like hypes people up and like, oh, that's that's great. People are working here. And like when you look at I wouldn't say that actually Ethereum is also a great one because there are hackathons and stuff and grants, but this you feel like okay, it's mature, but when Gardano, it's like mm, it's just it's just growing and having the first um, yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, yeah, it's great. Thank you. And so we covered a bit of like the higher scope, where we're coming to. And in Catalyst, it, it is a, meant to be like a, a place where we start hmm, uh, like creating a mechanics, how we share information with each other, how we make decisions in a way that we don't exhaust each other. Uh, and this, uh, this vision, like what could Catalyst be and what could it become? Uh, on the motherboard, I added some uh, minutes, uh, like videos. And uh, one of the video is 10 minute video from Dor Garbash uh, from last summit. And if uh, somebody has not seen it, or I would recommend watch it again. It's a great uh, like inspiration why we are here, what we are doing. And if you want to go a little bit deeper, there is a, I added um, Charles Hoskinson's, uh, uh, again, last summit video about what he sees the catalyst uh, could become and what effect the global governance would bring. And then if you want to go to the nitty gritty or you, you're like a technical person, then I also added a 40 minute video of um, governance and Cardano, uh, like a, whiteboard video well it's on a blackboard so we have, i guess you could call it a blackboard video and um, and yeah, i'm saying so again few people have joined to the chat or like in the zoom call i added uh, this motherboard link to, in the chat and you can open it up anytime you can you, you can like open up like, these videos watch them in the motherboard itself or on the top corner and uh, or when you click on the object there is a opening button and this will like open up new links and this will happen everywhere in this micro world basically if there is an object and you click on it there uh, there could be a link associated with which leads you to some more resources so speaking of uh, visions and um, what would do you want to give in this catalyst ecosystem According to my proposal, I'm responsible to bring in uh, the Brazilian Portuguese speaking community in order to get diversity, inclusion, and new ideas. I believe that would be it. Joe, what do we want to get from Catalyst community or this system? What would you expect to get? Well, I think. Um... You know, I see Catalyst as a way to self-fund projects that couldn't get funding otherwise or couldn't get off the ground otherwise. And personally, I mean, I, I love the ecosystem. I do think, you know, like, as I said earlier, I'm here because 
I think one of our opportunities is to help new people on board. I think um, there's just, you know, there's there's some enhancements we can provide. So I guess I'm looking for ways that I can help the community do that or present a challenge in which the community can help themselves do that. Thank you. Uh, I see Sebastian <laughs> he's back, but I will uh, start moving on and get down to the presentation. Um, so I also added one video here from um, just a nice, uh, how do you say, nos nostalgic uh, video I found from uh, Torgar Spam, Torgar Bash himself uh, in 2020 summit, where he first introduced uh, the Catalyst governance model to everybody, hey, this, this project is going to launch and this is going to happen. And that's interesting to go through because it's nothing like we are doing here right now. So you can see it's a living system. We, we change stuff very rapid pace. So when using that as a, uh, as a starting point and knowing where we are now, we, we plan to have a place where we could have, have a, like a treasury. We, we wanted to share money with each other, distribute it. And then we came up. Okay, let's let's make proposals about it. Let's let's uh, let's think about what we want to do, and uh, let's everybody give a chance to do that. So now we had a lot of proposals, and we had to start deciding. Okay, which one gets because everybody has their own amount, and it exceeds the amount we could give right now. So we had to start thinking. Okay, who do we don't give right now, and who we give right now? And then these people right now, we decided that, okay, let's, let's rate these proposals based on how much effect they have. These, these people who are writing proposals can, are they able to deliver? And, uh, uh, and also how they deliver it, because we want to do, well, not all, but uh, I personally uh, want to see a lot of open source development and, and transparent uh, projects going on so that we, would look into the, the team and see how, how things are doing, what are the blockers, without asking or, or like um, trying to, I don't know, I don't know like, yeah. But so basically, the transparency and open source is like my idea. And, and what is great about this uh, catalyst is that it, it's there, everybody's voice matters, and we're trying to kind of collective and do a collective decision making that I say open source, but somebody else like, I'm fine with centralized if it gets this thing done very fast. So we are competing our needs in, in one platform and in one governance way we are doing it. Um, so, this, so this would be my take today for Project Catalyst and what it's in a high level. Um, I added again a few guides here. Uh, official, launch, <laughs> official launch guide came out uh, yesterday from Town Hall, so you can find that here. But they also created um, this more information you're gonna see here, uh, or the previous ones. I also created a, um, like a document, Google document for that. Also can be found from Marabor. But I will drop it in the Zoom call. And this has like a written uh, information of the of the higher overview what this project catalyst what you can do here um so the first thing i would like to go into is roles so uh, in this system where we now trying to uh, distribute funds between proposals uh, there are several roles what has emerged to to kind uh, to to simplify the, the process for us. So when I zoom in, the main uh, uh, role is called proposers, and they're basically also an implementers for now. Maybe in future it's gonna well technically you can propose and hire somebody else to implement it, but for now you 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 call yourself as a CAO of the proposal. So when you create the proposal, you are the one who should be able to see this through and deliver on your proposal. Um, and uh, right now, when we look, think about the treasury, then these uh, uh, proposals 
uh, get 80% of that funding treasury. So when let's say we have 60 million to share uh, between all the roles, then proposals will get 80%. We come back to the treasury later, uh, um, but yeah, in this picture, in the green sticky notes, uh, there is a, like a high view, which roles, how many, much like persons that, of that fund they get. Um, if you are interested in creating proposals, then on the left side, uh, to zoom out, it's a bit lagging here, uh, I added the proposal guide uh, document here. This is like, um, if you want to make a proposal outside of idea scale and in the Google doc or somewhere where people can comment directly on something uh, a bit easier to share than uh, idea scale. Uh, so yeah, uh, and yeah, it also gives some guides where you could go to turn uh, to, 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 to do your proposals. Then another role in this capitalist ecosystem is proposal assessors. These are people then who take these uh, proposals and, and rate them um, based on how much impact it has towards the challenge. It goes under to, we'll talk about challenges a bit later, and then also like feasibility and auditability. Um, in this Today's session, I'm not really going into like what you have to do in proposals or what you what exactly you have to be to do to be a comment advisor. It, um, today I'm trying to give the whole scope of what is a project catalyst, what can you do here? And just to be aware. But yeah, if you want to learn more about comment advisors, again added a comment advisor assessment guide along with this Mara board. So you can see this Mara board starts to get more and more. Um, more heavy than resources. And if you're new to Marabot, you can zoom by with this mouse scroll. And when you hold down right click, you can like drag around yourself um, the board. And with just clicking, you will open objects and able to dive into them. And um, yeah, got a little attention here. So another role uh, in the Catalyst ecosystem is referrer. These are the people. For example, you have a friend and you think he's a very valuable member of the Catalyst uh, to bring their idea in. Let's say they are running a local shop in wherever and you prefer and you just tell them, hey, you have here some blockchain people working around, give them the opportunity to pay in ADA, for example. And that idea could be brought into the Catalyst ecosystem and as a referrer, just tell them, hey, put my name down here. If you get funded, I also get rewarded. So it's a, a, um, like an incentive mechanism to, to find, to, to help you to find people to, to make proposals which are good. And if they get funded, we know that this was a great proposal and, and all these people who bring these people in should be incentivized for that. Another role is a voter. And as a voter, you go into an application where all of these proposals are ranked by community advisors and you basically vote, do you want to fund that proposal or you don't want to fund that proposal? Or you can, of course, stay neutral and not uh, vote on the proposal at all. When you do this voting, it doesn't matter how many votes you do. And as soon as you do at least one vote, you are eligible for rewards, for the rewards. But and I think now this fund, it's gonna be change a little and there are going to be a minimum amount of um, uh, votes you have to cast. So probably there is gonna be like, you have to vote for 30 proposals or some minimum requirement. But all that uh, details will become more clearer when the voting ground comes because things change and uh, we'll see this has not been implemented before. And hopefully the application you use for voting will also kind of make sure that you understand clearly how many you need to vote for. And then we have four more main roles I would like to go into. So on the right side, I packaged a bit more advanced roles, uh, starting with Catalyst Circle members. So now we come back to this uh, governance mechanism where, where this thinking goes to, where this decision making is going to happen. 
in Qatar Circle, it's not a decision making body. So, but it's it's a place where you bring your concerns and they maximize it to the community awareness and to forums and uh, consensus and meetings over time. We kind of find out what we need to know and then how to be decided and usually a result comes at the end of that. Some things are very complicated and take time, but um, if you're interested in politics, or I don't know if, if you can call it politics, but uh, like these governance processes and what decisions get uh, can be made and what seems to be a priority in Catalyst, then I suggest to follow uh, Catalyst Circle member activities. Um, Along the Catalyst Circle, and there, are, there is another group called Catalyst Circle Admin Team, and these people help uh, help the Catalyst Circle members to coordinate. Also, they provide facilitation and documentation, and so the Circle members can be the sensors and bringing in new new problems and, and prioritize them and, and see who is doing what, while. And the admins themselves uh, help to kind of pull the infrastructure around them so they don't have to do some secretary work, for example, or take meeting minutes, but just focus on the strategy and, and uh, censoring. If you're interested in any of that uh, or how the circle members are working, add the document how to get in contact with them. And this is the CC admin team interest form. You fill it up and you will be able to join these governance meetings and listen in how they work and if you are interested you can also apply to these positions there is no like barriers like you know you cannot be this or that in Qatar circle although we people have to delegate for you but all the other roles are uh, almost all the other roles are that you basically join in at the right time and uh, you get in. If it's not the right time, you will be saved when to, when to apply or when to come back because Catalyst is like an iterative process and also in governance, it's uh, something like that. And that document on the left side, this shows um, uh, like more details about Catalyst Circle members, what they do, what they represent, how they work. And on that document, you can dive even more deeper if you're interested. Two more roles, uh, veteran uh, proposal assessors. Mm, these, uh, this group is a people of, so when you do the proposal assessing, you only, you, you create these kinds of um, your assessments and, and your rationale, why do you think this proposal should get that rating? And when you do it a couple of times, you are eligible for a role that and to be a veteran proposal assessor. And then what you're going to do is you're going to see a list of uh, other assessor assessments and you have to then declare, are they good enough or they're excellent or they should not be valid uh, for uh, getting rewards. So we are trying to put like a quality layer on top of it. So whoever is interested and has time to keep, uh, assess uh, and filter uh, out uh, assessments or, or recognize the very good ones. We highly need these kinds of um, positions. And if you're not eligible yet, I go through the proposal assessor role, get, get the gist of it. You don't have to do a lot and just one excellent is enough. Uh, I think even good can be so, because this veteran proposal assessor role, I'm, for my opinion, this is the most important role currently in the Catalyst, even more important than the governance layers themselves, even though they are important figures. But I think the collective um, decision making hits the rubber in this section. But it takes a bit of work to get in this role. And finally, there are challenge teams um, who, if this is a new role, um, well, maybe not a new role anymore. It has been now in few funds who are um, helping to get in tune with the challenge you are under. So when we go into challenges later and make, I will talk a bit of difference of them. Um, they, these are like a group of people who try to get you on board to challenge. And then once you complete, 
they also going to, if you get funded, they're going to collect your um, progress reports and help you uh, work together with other members on the, that challenge if needed. And coordinate with ILG or Catalyst team if also necessary. Um, I didn't go through this um, below section, but everything here is like um, supporting uh, resources for the roles. Uh, slide deck for Catalyst Fund 9 Town Hall 1. So, there, because uh, this was Town Hall 1 is when, like, first Town Hall, which introduces the branch Catalyst. So, that's why I added this uh, document in here to have to see, like, the official version, how people are introduced. Created one uh, dashboard or like this um, uh, picture how these. Um, Funds are distributed if somebody is interested and somebody asks, okay, well, how, how much somebody gets and why voters get 30 cents. And, and that's a valid question. Why voters do get 30%? Maybe we should move it to these veteran community advisors who are so valuable for us. So these are discussions we, we could take further. Um, then I have a document here, Catalyst Registration and Voting Guide. So if you want to be a voter, then it, it requires a bit of technical uh, knowledge, so uh, IOG's guide is quite uh, suitable to know how to create a state voting key and how to register and how to start voting. And then a bit of um, a link to a challenge teams. So when you want to see all the challenge team in one place and how to connect them, so that website will help you uh, to find that information. Anything about roles? that I went over too fast or you maybe misunderstood or has questions about. I just was thinking to say, bravo, man. This is an amazing document. <laughs> Thank you for putting it all together. I'm excited to be able to come back and dig in. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. And definitely. I recommend joining back because I'm adding sometimes anything new what is related to a higher level. I add it to here and I myself use it. But I always forget oh, what is that date when this stage starts. And then in the end, I will show where it is. So let's jump into challenges and proposals. So the main thing to uh, know about that is uh, this kind of uh, animated slide deck here. Uh, that in one, under one fund, you have one challenge setting challenge, which where you collect these, uh, I don't want to open it, uh, where everybody proposes a challenge setting. So this is totally different from uh, proposals themselves. And when, so when we think about like, when this everybody posts a proposal about challenge setting, then in the same fund, people, when you vote, you are able to vote for this, what challenges you want to get funded. And in general, it's the same way as in proposals that you ask, I think uh, we need to solve uh, climate change. And I, I think we need uh, to allocate 100 million to that. Oh, well, we don't have that much money. So 1 million <laughs> to that. And if it gets voted, then next fund, uh, this is like approved challenge, then the next fund, then these people are able to do these idea proposals or business proposals under that challenge. So it, um, yeah, it's very common that people get uh, misunderstand that we, what is the difference between challenges and proposals, and sometimes they also assess them differently. So if you're going to be assessor in this round, make sure that you look at the um, uh, challenge or a proposal in the correct way, so you don't like. Well, this proposal doesn't align with the challenge, but the, the challenge is a challenge setting. <laughs> so like, there are there are been like, situations where they, they, are, they think the proposal the same way. But it's easy to distinguish because if you go into this idea scale, on uh, this challenge setting is the like the last challenge. So fund line challenge setting is in the like in the bottom and under that. Uh, proposal when you like open it, then you can read about that challenge setting sentence. And when you go ideas, everybody posts only challenge settings there, no proposal or ideas. 
there could be some proposals there too, but in this situation, uh, I would suggest if you're assessor or if you are uh, just passing by, write in a comment that hey, you posted it in the wrong place uh, and guide the person into the correct uh, challenge or suggest them the actual challenge which you could propose under. And yeah, in this picture, I also represent the idea scale, how these propose like challenge settings where you can propose proposals look like. So developer ecosystem, open source, uh, taps and integrations. So I always, yeah. I always uh, tell people when I have this conversation with people that are just learning is just like, do you want to come up with the big questions that people need to solve or do you want to try to solve one of them that somebody already came up with you know I think that's the way that I've kind of helped to, uh, to explain it to people because it's conceptually it was very difficult for me when I was getting into this to understand like what what's the difference between these two things like what why would you what's the campaign for or whatever it's like it's the big questions you know but to try to make things better um I was going to ask uh if I could um how when did does IOG still help uh, create some of those challenges or did they stop doing that at some point? Uh, they totally stopped doing this, but uh, here I, in, in this introduction, I didn't add, but there are also uh, Catalyst native challenges, which means that uh, IOG partners also sometimes come into the idea scale and propose their challenge and maybe they use their own rewards or also ADA. For example, we had the Koti challenge where um, Koti tokens were given out for the people who help their brand to, to have like a better reach and adoption. Thank you. Mm, yeah, so I have also a picture here, of what challenges got funded. If you are interested, how much votes they got and who, who decided what were the ratings, then I also the link on the top corner again you can open it up and see more details this will actually open up the entire result so you have to navigate the channel settings <clears throat> moving on here so another thing to uh, know about is a funding cycle so this um, system uh, works in, uh, uh, in several cadences uh, we start with the proposal submission which started basically today I heard uh, one hour ago that there are still problems getting into submission states. Uh, so be aware, you cannot submit under all challenges yet, but hopefully it will be open today. And once you submit your proposals, you have uh, three weeks to refine them, to finalize them. The way I see it, I would suggest you to get fairly good proposal out already, answer those questions you see on the idea scale template. And then the next step in the next week, of go find what others are doing and try to find similar proposal ideas and people who, who could you connect with. And also join in Discord, Telegram, share a proposal because and this platform itself doesn't, doesn't do any outreach or, uh, or find you the partners you have to do the hard work to, to share your idea and, and find people to work with. And once you get these partners, you, you get some ideas. So we could, um, because there's oftentimes people join together and say, oh, we are trying to solve the same problem. Let's do it together. Why not? And they put their skills together and they withdraw one proposal and like finalize uh, and perfect and uh, the latest proposal. And then uh, uh, proposals are finalized, then no longer uh, proposals can be edited. And then when the proposal review stages start in that stage, at first, uh, as if you are a proposer and you want to be, be, be very aware that as soon as the proposal stay ends, in one day, you probably will be given one Excel sheet. And I highly recommend you go through, um, oh no, not yet. Uh, my mistake. After the final process, after the after it's locked, community advisors come in for one week. They assess your proposals, and then you have like few days to look at these assessments 
and the flag then and, and what flagging does it notifies veteran cognitive advisor assessors that these uh, assessments do not really apply to you because there are situations where assess the assessors don't really understand what they were supposed to do they uh, and it's it's not really uh, it, it's a system problem but uh, in this is something we could help with and kind of filter hey, this person just said good proposal and gave a rating and this is not an assessment we are looking for assessments to you know, educate each other what we are looking for and to improve the system and yeah and and it shows data shows that it has a very high impact when you flag it and, and then veterans usually look at it and make their decision um, once community advisors have uh, uh, gave the rating for a proposal and you have also looked them and then veteran community advisors come in and they start rating them is it good is it excellent or is it uh, filtered out and once all of that is done then you will finally see the final final results of the the proposal and it will go up to the voting and that will last for several weeks uh, where people have the application they see your proposal they read your solution and the problem and uh, sometimes the community advisors um, suggestions what they think about it and if they really are curious then they go also into the proposal itself and make the decision based on that once all of this decision making is done, then uh, Catalyst uh, team takes uh, his team together and uh, starts uh, ag like uh, checking into the system, pulling the sidechain apart and seeing if the all votes are matching and everything is going accordingly. They create the amazing winning sheet for us and we finally see who gets funded. And for those who do get funded, they will be moving on to the next stage where they will be onboarded by challenge teams and first uh, distributions for the proposals will be sent out and they will be like the catalyst coordinator team and for the rest who did not get funded you can always join back and use the same idea um, and hopefully you have learned a lot and you have some better ideas how to approach the system or also you changed your interest and want to take a different role and then of course the um the the a lot of the assessments can help that person to reform their um uh, their proposal hopefully right like um yeah sometimes i submitted a proposal and then i get all these assessments and i can take that and rewrite my proposal based on these suggestions sometimes if the community advisor offers some good suggestions, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see how I already mentioned, hey, proposal assessor. <laughs> yeah, this is a new, yeah. a bit of a, uh, this, um, how the, the hump, or I don't know how to say it. This, this stage where we're gonna have community advisors and proposal assessors mixed up quite a lot. But I think this change was uh, necessary because it, the name itself brings clarity. Um, so yeah, that was a funding uh, cycle in um, in short. And finally, the last stage, a bit of like catalyst treasury. Uh, I added some uh, notions about like state pool delegation and. Uh, what does uh, like a research paper more into why this is being done and how 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 the math is coming together to to make this happen and then the latest uh, uh, transcription also from Kevin Hammond who is uh, holding basically or not holding but uh, part of the know how people who who hold the keys for um, this Catalyst treasury and make the the hardest decisions on what to do with the funds and how to move forward. Mm. In also added a bit of a graph here and um, to just give a high level overview how the treasury works. So imagine every one of you in this room are other holders, assuming you hold HADA. And what you do with your IDA is you 
you should at least delegate it to stakeholders. And when you delegate it to stakeholders, you, you strengthen the network. And now when you send uh, ADA to somebody or receive ADA to somebody, transaction fees are involved. And all this transaction fee is right now 0 0.17 for the like, random transaction. And if you mint tokens, it's even uh, higher. Uh, and this fee is now split into Cardano Treasury and stake pool operators. I think it's right now like 20% goes to treasury and 80% to stake pool operators. But, and to be exactly sure, I added these other links and resources if you want to know the exact details. And this Cardano treasury is just a huge like pile of uh, money or like ADA in one, or maybe, I don't know, is it in one wallet, but it's like one place, I assume it's in one wallet. And then now this project catalyst is like an experiment that, hey, let's allocate some of that treasury to and use it as a project catalyst. So technically they are the same wallet, but uh, the project catalyst only like uh, gives out money to us in, in, a, in a decision made in governance, basically that we are, right now the rule is that we're gonna go uh, spare 60 million ADA to everybody. Uh, but if the uh, price drops, I, I think if the, yeah, if the dollar price goes more than 60 million, then it still remains 60 million ADA. So we have like a hard cap right now. But once we get the system working, I think we're gonna increase it. And when we know where to distribute it, we, we learn the tricks how to distribute funds and, and what should uh, where it should go. That is the slow process. We're we are working all together towards that by doing these small works, taking notes, doing proposals, assessing. So yeah, this was um, a small presentation through different areas, roles, challenges, proposals, funding cycle, a bit of capitalist treasury, and and mainly all of like. To, if you want to learn more about all of this, I added some then links around this in the Myra board. Any question about these uh, like specifics or things you want to know more about Catalyst? Um, the floor is open to question. Uh, or I can also share a bit of about the onboarding stuff, like how to how to get involved, how to meet people, how to find these kinds of sessions. So is there questions for now? That, that's a really good, that's a really good point. I think that that's, I was thinking of a few friends that I wish were able to be here on this call today um, that I wasn't able to tell in time. And I was like, oh, I wish there was somewhere they, they knew they could come and find this uh, or whatever. And, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm in, interested to hear that. Um, a different, I, I know there's like discords and things, but like, is it shared on Twitter or somewhere where it's more publicly accessible for people when they type in Catalyst or something somewhere? Or do you have to like know somebody that knows somebody? Because that's kind of how it feels right now. Yeah, I, you know I what I mean? It, I think it feels right that way. I myself only shared it in uh, Discord myself, but I know got the school also as Twitter and all these other major sources. I'm not sure is was Kawe behind the, <laughs> the reach out for this, but I think a lot of people help and see, oh, there is an event going on and they kind of, yes, mouth to mouth kind of, uh, and, and application to application it, it reaches, but it's, we are still yeah. in early stages. And so, yeah, it might not uh, reach to everyone in everywhere. So I don't know if that is there Twitter or uh, Telegram or, um, I don't know, Reddit announcements. I'm here I in think my little, Discord space yeah. and I don't really move out there. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate you sharing that because it, it also helps me, informs me to, as like a, just like a community member, like, oh, maybe I need to be taking a little bit more of an active role in sharing this information uh, to other people as well. Like, I mean, this is, it's- and that's it's uh, real community advisor work if you do that. <laughs> it, it really, it really is, you know? So it's like, when we come into these decentralized spaces, it's hard to kind of shift our, our thoughts and, 
and ways of of working from like oh there's this central entity and they'll make sure to you know share it with everyone publicly and it's like oh wait no this is decentralized we have to actually take an active role in uh disseminating the information to people and uh, in this way we actually find some really good quality uh in, you know, uh, people that are really excited to actually work on something like this uh, because there are close friends or something like this that maybe have uh, some similar interests or something like that. I don't know. Um, this is this is cool. Thank you for sharing that. It's a question. We have some statements, questions. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, hi, hi, people. Uh, how about the course the, the CAO? I don't know how it names today. Uh, the course for the uh, CAs and DCAs, did you know something about that? Uh, proposal assessor workshops probably start in uh, two or three weeks, as now the uh, submission starts. Uh, I myself looking into doing one mini proposal workshop. I know Bill is going to do a uh, um, proposal workshop at some point. So it, it will take a bit of time when we get that stage. So right now we are kind of rolling in the same sequence as the as the catalyst stages themselves. So um, yes, in this in this fund uh, that will be uh, that the, taking the course that will be uh, uh, that will be an obligation or we can we can be. I am not aware that we're gonna. Um, to any obligations for now, but it's a good question because uh, rumors are that um, deeds are coming and next week I'm gonna look into if there is somehow where Catholic School could help to basically do credentials and run people through workshops and give them the, hey, you know your stuff, get, get your points in, maybe we could incentivize it with IOG and think through a system that I know that Benjamin is doing the community advisor work. I allow him to do it. Maybe since he was here to even educate himself and give his feedback back to the system itself, maybe we could incentivize it even more when he gets like an excellent review, add that extra bonus to his aid rewards. I think these systems could come if, if we all see the value in it and collaborate to, to achieve that. Mm, cool. That would be great. Thanks. Saru. <laughs> yeah, go. Uh, hello. So I have many questions, but uh, I know I can't ask in this session, but I'll go to the document and if I have some problem, I'll go post in a telegram group. And also you told that you have upcoming more sessions to tell us. But right now I have one question uh, between like first time I heard this challenges and proposals. So what I understand there are some challenges in each fund and the proposals are made with uh, aligned to that challenges. Am I correct? Is my understanding correct? Yes. So when you go into the idea scale front page, you basically see a list of challenges. All of these are challenges. Uh, and but there they, is one challenge called they also call them oh sorry they also call them campaigns which is kind of it's kind of a little bit ah. confusing for people sometimes yeah. they don't realize campaigns are actually challenges but they're yeah. the same thing just so you know sorry to interject but that's a cool notice i didn't even notice that thing <laughs> like yeah okay so this is my first time i want to be a part of uh, as a PA in this fund nine. So as you told the timelines uh, as a PA, it will start at uh, 1st of July, I guess. So is it, can you recommend like what needs, how I get prepared for that in this month? Still I have 20 days. Yeah, for now, I would uh, recommend going through this community advisor assessment guide. I can drop you the direct link here if you despise the Mirobot link I shared you. <laughs> I know that some people have, have problems with new tools and it takes time. So here is a document to go and we do that. And then another thing in this onboarding section, 
here I kind of brought all kinds of different ways you could um, connect with community or what kind of media you want, starting with like communications. So if you haven't, then join IOJHK email forms. So this is the, so if you join here, then you're gonna get like a newsletter uh, to your email address. And there you will always feel the latest news, probably even Catalyst School uh, events or happenings are going to be there unless somebody sleeps on um, <laughs> sleeps out to send the messages to Danny. <laughs> we need help put that major content in the newsletter. Um, and then also announcements give you up to date what's happening and when the PA starts because um, in a finalizing stage, so that would happen then. So this is the stages, the official uh, way to show that. So proposals finalize their stuff in 23rd, so in basically two weeks. And um, then you are already able to register yourself. I don't know, it says registration period here. Well, it, I don't know, maybe it changed, but it used to be able to register yourself as a proposal assessor uh, in the same stage where proposals are finalizing themselves. And the registration works like that, that you just go to the idea scale and pop-up appears. If you close the pop-up, then you have to navigate to your um, account. But then again, if you join in town halls, you follow newsletters, you follow announcements, then you will get that information. So at least check it weekly, then, you're, then you won't miss anything. Another option is to connect with community. I added the Discord server where everybody's, I'm there active. I also added Project Catalyst Telegram chat. There are IRG stuff and other uh, community advisors are active to, to guide you and answer your questions if you have any. Uh, the Catalyst School Discord server, Swarm Discord server, and then also a, community, a list of community essentials, but it's not, this is less about like um, proposal assessors. This is like more an overview if you want to learn more about what there is in Cardano community. From media, from YouTube channels, I will suggest to skim through Catalyst School YouTube videos. There are many like community advisor videos from previous rounds, and then you can see people complaining or, or talking what was great, what was bad, and, and some workshops we even go through assessments themselves and everybody gives their own feedback and assessment. So we kind of have more examples and, and context to, to know how this uh, system works and what to know. Wow, thanks. Um, thanks. That's a lot yeah. of information. I will definitely check it out and uh, see if uh, I have still have some doubts in the future. I was gonna um, share if you if you if you ever want, um, you can of course go to Idea Scale, which is linked many times here on Tivo's um, document, <clears throat> and look at past uh, proposals. One thing I was doing for a while was helping uh, people to rewrite their proposals, um, and so um, one of the things I was doing is like going to past funds and looking at which ones passed and which ones failed, or, or I shouldn't say failed, but they were not funded, you know. Or maybe there wasn't enough funding left once it got to them or whatever. And, and I was reading those proposals and it really helped me to learn like which proposals seem to pass most often. And typically there are ones that are were, you know, answering all of the different questions that we find uh, are in the different sections of a proposal uh, from the guide, you know, that CA guide will help you learn a lot about that. Another resource I found was um, Vito Nation. I just put it in the chat. Lido Nation has a place where they break down, you know, they, they kind of import all of the different um, uh, proposals from Catalyst, uh, from the idea scale, and you can look up different proposals there if you want. It's a little bit more um, involved, um, but yeah, I find reviewing past proposals, both funded and unfunded, is helpful as a community advisor or a proposal assessor um, just in our work because it helps kind of inform like what have the VCAs helped us to learn in the past, essentially, or VPAs, um, by which ones passed and which ones uh, or funded or not funded. I don't know. 
since they correlate quite a lot. Yeah, that's quite an uh, enhanced mechanic to learn about. I was just thinking maybe I could find quickly. I think um, you're right. Yeah, maybe maybe what I'm saying is a little overboard, but it's just, uh, yeah. yeah I mean, you if you got 20 days and you're just going to be studying this stuff, maybe you'll get to it, you know. Yeah. Well, that's a good idea. Thanks for letting me know. What I would maybe suggest the best tool for that. Yeah, there is, yeah, light donation probably is too. I didn't have, I haven't used that myself. I use usually the um, AIMS tools the, from Cardano Catalyst. So this one and the top if on the Marabot also. And here you could choose like a fund date, let's say Cardano scaling solutions, and you will see some warehouse.io idea got two stars and then you see somebody reviewed with one star basically everything and better and comment advisors rated it good and then you will see other options also. so here everybody rated it good yeah see but i've never even seen this tool before <laughs> i'm already learning so much man and this is another one thank you for sharing that trying to find an excellent but yeah so like i gonna but yeah these are all the assessments people did and you can also see this the proposal got funded and this one actually got funded just browsing one more time to see if i can find an excellent oh no here is one excellent assessment and you could read how he assessed this proposal and then you want to learn about proposal Click on that link, be a full proposal in idea scale. And I, I can drop this tool in the link too with you. One thing I can share is that uh, um, I was, I noticed when I did the, the PA work this last time, most all of my assessments were rated excellent. And um, this is the first time that I ever did PA work. And um, I was actually quite, uh, you know, cautious to even get into the work because I didn't, and I didn't know if I was going to do a good job or whatever. So I spent a few different funds just thinking about it, taking these classes, to, listening to TiVo, like going to all these things. I really overlearned. I didn't need to learn as much as I did. And, and because uh, I ended up getting a lot of excellent uh, out of, out of mine. And um, I, re I realized what the main two things were just to make sure to stay within the boundary of like, 300 to 750 words, that was helpful. Um, and also to make sure to go through the, the three different areas, the impact, the, what are the three? The impact, accountability and feasibility or feasibility and accountability. And um, when you look in the CA guide or the, it's called the community assessor advisor guide still but it'll soon be the proposal assessor guide. Um, when you do that, yes, those three. Um, when you do that and you go through these check, this checklist right here, this is, if you're a PA and you take a screenshot of this and you make sure to look at all of those and make all of your comments based on those things right there, and then add something in about who you are and your qualification to be making the statement to say, um, you know, with 15 years in multimedia, I can assess this to say that da 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 da, da like um, this added adds a lot of value to the Cardano ecosystem for this reason. It's like, if you're gonna give three stars, you wanna say, the reason I'm giving three stars is for this reason. Um, you're not meeting the KPIs uh, in the roadmap, the milestone, da, da 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 or your budget is lacking any detail. We really do need a further explanation because this is a quite large budget or something like this. You have to give your reasoning. And if you, it's very logical, if you give those reasonings and you follow this exact thing on the screen to the T and stay between 300 and 750 words, I guarantee you, you're gonna get good or ex excellent, but you have to take the time to do that. It does take time. Because sometimes I notice that on the um, outcomes when they send this big document out, this uh, big uh, spreadsheet with everybody's results, um, you can see some people have thrown in 300 assessments and maybe only two of them actually went in and the rest were thrown out. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, in some extreme examples, you know, so there maybe they're just, make, you know, they're not doing a good assessment. But really, the assessment is what you see on the screen right there. And just answering those questions as an assessor, you will you will go so far as an assessor. 
Uh, and I didn't realize that was really all it took. It was very basic. But you just stay within that and only assess the challenges that you have qualifications to be able to say something about. I, me, I, I'm not very technical, so I'm not going to go into the development one because I don't know what is this, what, wh who do they need on a team to accomplish this new piece of uh, software? I don't know. I'm a writer, you know what I mean? So for multimedia, things like this, I can assess that proposal, you know? So just stay within your realm and follow this guide. And man, that's uh, really what you need. I'm writing an article and I'll tell you guys about it maybe sometime soon and maybe be able to share it in a month or two. But, um, but yeah, these are the things that are basics. That was a great introduction to proposal assessment. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. What it comes down is to, to ask the right questions from proposals and you were, as an assessor also answer them yourself. So because you want to give the guidance to the proposer and to the voter. Mm, I do I like myself look it mostly towards the eye of how could I help that proposer to be have an even better proposal next time. Um, yeah, what it opened one link uh, while we were talking innovation fund architecture. So who, who really want to go like very heavy into this stuff. Um, I collected uh, one motherboard where I'm, I have like a lot of resources about all these stages and roads in one motherboard. This could be a bit overwhelming, so I understand, but those who are interested in these kinds of uh, stuff, if we zoom out, I actually added, um, we, had, we did proposal assessor perspective uh, for this innovation fund shares where we basically spend several weeks of meetings to discuss uh, what pr proposal assessor should do or um, uh, what we expect them to do and how where they could get help and how they are related to other roles. And, and yeah, if, if you were asking, uh, is, is this necessary? Yeah, this is totally over thinking it, but if, if you want to, like get into the edge of what's happening in government and really be not just an op op proposal assessor, but community advisors who brings in proposal assessor and designs how processor um, system should look like, then this is a great resource again to go to. Um, and in this area, there are like basically these three meetings, but I created uh, like a 15 minute overview video to so that's the, actually the link I wanted to capture and drop into the Zoom chat. And there I basically give a good overview what is this session about. You can use timestamps to kind of skip the mechanics of that and really get the introduction how to look at that motherboard. I think you just shared a Catalyst School one-to-one -one support thing, it says. Yeah. I don't see a YouTube video. Sorry. Uh, the cover shared the one-to-one -one support uh, form where you can, uh, in below that, uh, drop the video link separately. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't see that. I was like, wait, what is this? Yeah. Sorry. And that uh, mirror board, we don't need the mirror board. We just need to go to that video and watch you talk about it there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And if, you, if you're interested in that, the mirror board, what was there, then this is also in this introduction, the Cardano project catalyst on the community driven platform vision resources. Or if you want to analyze funded projects, there is an accelerator and mentors tomorrow. Another launch guide. I could update it now because we got one fund nine here. So this my robot itself is gonna update and gonna have interesting and new stuff which come out if it's appropriate. Um, well yeah so I'm, I think I went over most of that stuff. If you don't know the idea scale link, then here, this is the link that takes to the idea scale. Um, but that's, I don't know, this is, this is what I have to share. <laughs> okay, Saruba, yep, you got to raise your hand. Yeah, thanks for this uh, very knowledgeable session. And there's a lot to do after this session from your slide. 
I, I'm sure you have made a lot of efforts to make this. My question is from Benjamin, like uh, you are involved uh, in, in this catalyst from, uh, you look like experienced. So maybe you have devoted many years or months in this. I just want uh, like uh, we are always, uh, we love rewards and perks and benefits. So in terms of rewards, what you can say that, uh, what we can expect in average after uh, like, um, the breakdown from this last fund, if you, if you, uh, this math, not so long ago, if you do it, it it's really kind of, I mean, it's a bit complicated. We're not going to go into it here, but there's a whole lottery system, meaning like if, if when people assess the same proposal, then there's kind of a lottery. And if they're all excellent or good and none of them are thrown out, then there's a lottery system to determine who's going to receive those rewards and things like this. And, um, but if you break it down out of all the assessments, I don't know exactly how many there were, I have the document here somewhere, but without opening it up, I know it was $63 per assessment. If you count all the good, excellent and thrown out, if you take all the assessments that were ever created this last fund, which isn't quite a fair breakdown mathematically, but if you just break it down like that, it was $63 per assessment that was given out. Of course, they'd only went to the excellent or good ones, but uh, nonetheless, and then there, I think the top, uh, the top rated or the top earning assessors were getting like, well, I mean, in terms of average per um, per assessment, we're, at, we're averaging between like three and $350 per assessment. Those were the people that are making like excellent and good, good and excellent only um, and not really having much thrown out or, or maybe they had some thrown out, but they had a lot that were excellent or good. That's why I always try to tell people like, try to stay in the excellent or good range. Try to, don't just throw a bunch of uh, you know assessments and see which one sticks to the wall because this doesn't help our community grow. Our, uh, the the assess the the, the veteran uh, proposal assessors only have so much time. If we give them quality work as CAs or PAs, then they are working with a much higher level amount of work. They can look in at great assessments and then and then throw some of those out. And imagine if we're so fine tuned that we're throwing out really amazing assessments, that means the ones that are getting through are excellent, excellent, just such high quality. It will make Catalyst so much better. It'll make the proposers so much more capable the next time around if they get thrown out or not funded, they, they'll be able to uh, you know, give so much more. So the better we do at our job, the, you know, I'm glad that I, I was seeing the average for the people that were getting the most through and they were doing excellent work. We're getting like 300 to 350 per assessment. Now this is just an average. This is, you know, you can go and do the math yourself. There's some spreadsheets I could share if you want here. I don't know if this is the appropriate place to share the IOG spreadsheets that they were sending out or who or catalyst spreadsheets. Yeah, they but, are um, public. What's that? They are public and this innovation fund research uh, motherboard. Uh, on the, which is on the introduction also, it has the resources for these excels. Oh, okay. So you already have those um, those spreadsheets on yeah. your, your they report public, link? Yeah. Okay, there are, great. There, yeah. there are also some analytics and stuff. I haven't really gotten into it, but I heard that like, I think one assessor got over $50,000 and there 55, were- 55,000, yeah. And some people got like $1,000 per assessment because they, this bonus mechanism just matched based on like did the proposal got funded and he did and he was the only person basically on the proposal and that also skews the bonus amounts oh i didn't realize that part that makes a lot more sense that was i was trying to understand that part uh, i appreciate you mentioning that yeah so i, I hello to all I, I like to add uh, a little thing to that because um, I I was a proposal last fund and I also uh, do as PA, but uh, I noticed that some people uh, in the in the year to do more assessments and do more things can do a, a little bad uh, their job and could do a lot of damage to the community to the people that is doing the proposals because. Uh, they don't look the the changes that they do there and, and the things like that. So it, it is important that the PAs do the their work so well, so 
can help the Cardano community and the proposals because the, uh, the, the people that are doing the work in the other way is doing a, a lot of work and, and trying to get and learn a lot of things. Um, I, I, I have to make a, a question. You know, when I do up, up uh, it was the first time I, I, I did the, the PA, as PA, the last fund, how can I look, how, how were my assessments uh, like? How was my assessments or and uh, the way the other people, um, the VCAs grade me? Uh, how do I, where can so I look that? So I can I be better? Basically, you have to remember exactly what proposal you assessed and yes. what did you write? And when these VCA aggregated files are sent out, you are able to basically you have to filter what you said by that, and then you will okay. know what is your assessor code, and then you can filter by the assessor code because yeah, right now, or you go to the catalyst team, and I don't know, I rather not advise that because you then bother people, but it's also an option to just ask the Catalyst team, hey, my name is Daniel, this is my idea, um, idea scale link, what is my assessor idea? No, 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 my idea scale propose. Uh, if I want to be a uh, look, uh, how was my assessments, uh, how they were graded and things like that, I can uh, look it up in a list or I have to remember the, the proposal that I assess so I can uh, read he's it saying, uh, or know the, that, the, the... Yeah, the, I want the, to first know step, the first step my, is to find your code, your name. And he's okay. saying the, re the way that you have to find your name is either you need to remember what you said so and which yes. proposal, because then you have to go to that proposal and all the comments that actually passed. Was it excellent? Was it good? And then you'll find, oh, that, those are my words. I said those. That's what I said. And then right next to it, it will say your name. It'll say Z underscore assessor underscore and then a, nu a number. And that's your unique name. Now you know your name. Once you know that, then you can look at all. Then you can filter out and just search find for that assessor name. And then all of the different assessments that you made will be there. And you can research. Oh, OK. Now I can see. This is it. Oh, right okay. Yeah. Okay. So this was the Innovation Fund uh, motherboard I shared before, where I collect all kinds of documents related to Catalyst. Um, and if there is this, uh, under there is VCA aggregated file, because this is sent to everybody in newsletter. I think you also were able to see it once it was done. And this Excel looked like that. And here you, Go, let's say. Uh, oh, in the bottom tabs. VCA aggregated. Yeah. So VCA aggregated. Here is, I don't know, is this correct? I wonder now. Ooh, I have forgotten because I haven't opened that uh, Excel so for long. <laughs> I think this is correct. So basically, you remember what you wrote in the impact alignment, and let's assume you wrote like a good proposal, then you know uh, this assessor 2018 is me, and then you can, uh, well, how would you just download that folder because uh, I don't know how well the Google Sheet will work on filtering. So let's get, I'm just gonna take a, random assessor let's take let's assume you know your code now oh click the way and then you filter out all your assessments and then you know that this is me nobody else knows and then you will be able to see on the right side how many uh, veteran community advisors gave you good how many filtered you out how many gave you excellent okay and yeah, based on that, you know, the, like the, the metrics, <laughs> how well you, your assessment be. Okay, if you want to go you. into detail, like, hmm, who is, who actually gave me, then we have run a bit of a problem that you need to download every single Google 
fire. Oh, no. and it's more that uh, I want to know how how I do it and and uh, how can improve it. Yeah, then this VCA file. And so if you did any assessments in this last fund and you remember any anything about proposal or assessments you did, then and you are able to find your assessment, then you know your assessor code and then you can basically look through okay. all your perfect. Hello, Saro. You got the question. Okay. Before. Yeah, so as per the timeline, I've seen that there are only 15 days uh, dedicated for uh, for assessment. So, we, so as a PA, now PA is PA. So, will we have only two weeks to do this stuff? Well, it's more than one week last time. Okay, it I was think... only one week. So, yeah. So, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't got you. Go ahead. So, yeah, you can please. Oh no, please go ahead. I I I, I okay. didn't realize. So, so my question is that uh, if I want to contribute as a PA, so my role is just for two weeks in the three months. Well, if you want to be a perfect proposal assessor and also a community advisor, then I suggest you to join calls and advise people who ask mentors or, hey, I have made these proposals and you can go in, I guess, they comment on them. You can connect people, join events to learn more about where people could go to learn more about, then use that learned information to go into this idea scale and advice. But yes, it's not incentivized uh, monetarily by the system yet, but it's more incentivized by the community itself. So the things we do have. But yeah, yeah one... you... mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so, but yeah, if you if you only want to focus on proposal assessments, then basically yeah, this only that specific time frame is for assessing proposals. And you will yeah. be given guides how to do that. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. <laughs> what I was gonna mention was that last time out when I was doing it, my assessments for fund seven, um, I was or fund eight, uh, I was thinking um boy, I wish I could have had a conversation with this person before and I could have mentioned, please make a more thorough budget because then you'll probably get through because you have a good uh, you know, uh, proposal otherwise or some, some minor flaw or something like this that really took them out of the running for being voted through because there was just not any clarity there. Um, so now it's like, oh, now I'm excited to be able to look on idea scale, look through the proposals that I assume that I'll probably be assessing later because they're in the category that I have knowledge in, right? So I'm going to go through there and make comments and give kudos and all of these things on idea scale to those proposals because then I'm going to get to know them better. And guess what? As a community, or as a proposal, uh, what do you, I'm sorry, a proposal assessor. Um, I'm going to be more knowledgeable about all of the assessments I'm going to make, and I'm probably going to be able to make them in a in a more quick fashion, because I'm already I've already educated myself on a lot of the ass the assessment the proposals. So we're not incentivized directly, but I will tell you that I bet it's going to take you less time to assess these proposals because you're going to know them more intimately. You're going to have talked to the people there. And you don't need to tell them, hey, I'm going to assess this and this is my assessor number. Of course, this is all, you know, um, um, you know, uh, anonymous. But at the same point in time, you create a relationship in that way where you're going to actually be informing yourself to the point where when you're doing your proposal assessment, um, boy, you're going to know that you're going to do it pretty, pretty quickly. Um, so, yeah, I would. Ex and, and also it just makes the whole system better. That's to have these conversations and to be helping people right then, then you don't have to be writing in hindsight. You don't have to say, uh, you know, next time if this doesn't get funded, because clearly, you know, as an assessor, it's probably not gonna get funded, there's no budget there. It's like, okay, next time, make sure to include a budget, you know? Um, you can have that conversation beforehand and you can help these teams a lot better. You can become a better quality assessor in that way. Um, and then lastly, is just this, the fact that, um, <clears throat> you know, 
you know, you're, yeah, anyway, you're just making the ecosystem better and, and, and function better. And then as that happens and you're bringing that into a conversation like this or other catalyst meetings, or something or maybe you share this in a town hall that you're having this happen and you would like this work to be incentivized other people will raise their hand too and kind of talk about it and over time if this needs to be incentivized to have this more uh high you know more more time being spent getting to know the proposers maybe we'll see that uh, also be um um you know given some priority in terms of incentive but maybe not who knows you know so it's all a living growing community right the whole process is always changing. Okay, so is it uh, possible to uh, connect to the people who submitted the proposal? In ITSCAL, you can send them private messages and in comment, you can basically write below their proposal. Okay, okay, cool. Thanks, Benjamin, that was a great explanation. Thanks for trying. I'm gonna stop recording.